commemorate 50 years of Jay Jackson's fashion brilliance, I decided to put on an exhibition with the Queen's Historical Society dedicated to Jay Jackson, 40 years of fashion design brilliance, past, present, and future. Part of the reason why I decided to make sure that we do past, present, and future is to include other designers, scholars, and historians. So the exhibition is actually divided into three parts. It's called Exalting the Past, Versioning the Present, and Vanguard in the Future. Um, I decided to divide it into three parts to describe Jay Jackson's life from his past, um, what his present became, and then ultimately what happened to him in his future. With these titles as well, I decided to include other fashion designers, scholars, and I created interviews at Parsons New School of Design. And part of them fall into Exalting the Past, where they're retired, and then there are other parts that are um, part of the version of the present, which are people who are more um, experienced within their career. And then there are people who will fall into Vanguard in the future, and then those yes. designers are actually people who started their businesses recently, or they just graduated from school. To South Jamaica Queens, and the exhibition now goes into Jay Jackson's life. Um, it starts with his dad, which is Sydney Jackson, which is his mom, Ethel Rita Jackson, and this is his sister, Helen, she's the eldest. And this is Arlene. She's the uh, third eldest. This is Sydney Jackson. That's his fraternal twin. And this is Jay Jackson. This is actually South Jamaica housing unit. Uh, this image is them in front of Jamaica housing in the 1940s. And that's the actual building present day. That's from 2019. And what you see here, I merged these two images together because Jay Jackson eventually decided to move out and live with his neighbors, and they actually moved to St. Albans, Queens, where I'm from. Okay, now I wanted to tell you to take a look with everything inside the vitrine. I decided to access the images from Queens Historical Society. I wanted to incorporate um, their collection as well as my collection together. This is Merrick Boulevard in the 1920s. Part of the reason why I decided to take these images and put it together is because this is how Jay Jackson's parents would have experienced New York City in the 1920s when they first moved here in the 1930s. It was the interwar period. Also, this is how Jay Jackson would have experienced New York City as well when he was growing up. This is Jamaica Avenue. This is Guy R. Um, Boulevard, which used to be called New York Avenue. This is the farmer's market in the 1970s. And then these are other images of Jamaica Avenue, which uh, for me, I never knew Jamaica Avenue used to look like this. Part of this board here that I titled uh, Chance Slash Change is that he was taking a chance by leaving law school. He actually went to NYU Law School um, to pursue fashion. So he worked as a bank teller for a year, um, and that allowed him to gain enough money to start taking costume design courses. Over here, you will actually get to see um, Jay Jackson's family and friends. Um, this is Jay Jackson's resume. Part of the reason why I merged New York City as well as um, Paris together is because uh, Jay Jackson, after working in the fashion industry in New York, garnered enough money to end up going to Paris. As I was saying earlier, that Jay Jackson decided to move to Paris. That ultimately changed his life. He actually got his first job working for Jean Chouber as an assistant designer. Jean Chouber actually ended up leaving his firm. And Jay Jackson took over, producing this 1970 old couture collection. The collection came out on January 26 and 27. And now we're in February, Black History Month. And this is the 50th year. I thought, what better year to um, commemorate Jay Jackson in this way? The great part about being able to do this exhibition is that I had a budget. <laughs> Making it rain, no. So with the budget, when you do have um, actual money, to being able to produce better imaging, actual canvases, these things can last, you know, 40, 50 years, and then exhibitions can continue to go on even beyond the schools. So here, further along, these are actually um, additional images of Jay Jackson's collection for Jean Chouer, Old Couture. Um, this is Paris, and these are two models posed in the streets of Paris. For me, present day, I feel like these actual images of the garments can be worn today.
And then finally, we're actually wrapping on um, J. Jackson's Book of Tour collection. These two images here were actually separate images. I went into Photoshop and merged these together. I wanted to try to get as much content that I could put out as possible, utilizing the space. Okay, so now, this is Jay Jackson on his own in Paris, same year in 1970, producing his own collections with his brand name. And this is his friend Lester Wilson, who influenced him to um, pursue his dreams, to move to California, and so on and so forth. Lester was a war renowned choreographer and taught many celebrities that we know present day how to dance, including John Tabolka. Lester is also from St. Albans, Queens. They met at Jamaica High School. And they went to Grace United Methodist Church, she went to Grace United Church. Okay, so the final image here that we get to see is actually J. Jackson's collection, it's the Peace Collection. I, I do find that the motifs is something to let you know that this was the 1970s. And what was interesting about it is that it's cashmere, tied in with leather, and then you have all the details. My friend who just left Isaiah described this as an androgynous look. He said that he felt it could be for both men and for women, where one is where. Okay, so what I decided to do here was to put my thesis on display. This thesis is actually the driving force that allowed me to be able to produce this exhibition. Within the exhibit display here, these books actually helped me to argue why the fashion should be in the fashion historical narrative. It actually helped me to take apart how American fa fashion historiography is defined and who the gatekeepers are. If you look closely in, you get to see the green book that's here. Part of the reason why I chose the green book, 1940, is because Jay Jackson was born in 1941. And the green book for people who are traveling to New York City was a place to let them know where it was a safe haven, that you could sleep, where you could eat, and things of that sort. In the very back, the way we wore style, black style then, was by Michael McCullough and actually Renee Hunter. Renee Hunter is the ex-girlfriend of Jay Jackson. And in the book, it features Jay Jackson. And Jay Jackson is so excited. There's a quote that says, Lady Bird Johnson was calling me and she called upon me to say congratulations for producing your open tour collection. Now we've actually entered into my favorite part of the exhibition, which are the two boxes. This is actually Lloyd Hardy, which is Jay Jackson's partner, and he's actually featured wearing the vest. Here's the other vest right here, a real life version, where you get to see it in person. When I met with Lloyd, he said, you know, Rachel, you can have the vest. And, you know, I'm going to give you the portfolio because I feel like you'll be able to do so much with it. And so I hope that all of you guys are inspired to get to see that this is the exhibition and what it looks like presently. Right here, we look at these uh, two billboards. This is Jay Jackson's life. Now he's back in New York City. Um, he left Paris. Um, he did experience some racism in the fashion house and decided to come home. So he ended up designing for a company called The New Fires, which is, this is the illustration. Here's the garment. That's actually his house on York Avenue. I think it's like in the 60s, just right off the beach. Right here, you get to see the toga, which is a sketch. <laughs> and then right here as well, you get to see the New York Times. Um, this brand is called Juju. I actually met with the owner of Juju, and he told me about how Jay came to work with him, how he's a fantastic designer, how he was able to get the garments into Bloomingdale's, and they were in the windows, and you know they had these New York Times major ads, and they were super excited to be able to experience this. Um, yeah. Here, you have Celine Mooney, and actually, this is an ad that's discussing um, D. Jackson's full collection for Celine Mooney, and that you should come to their showroom to be able to see it. Featured here as well, this is actually a playbill. I took the playbill and blew it up so you get to see it. Here, you get to see Jay Jackson's signature, which is throughout many of the exhibition. This is how I was able to take Jay Jackson's signature, lift it off of the document, and then utilize it in the actual exhibition. One of the other things I wanted to do was to show that G. Jackson's garments went on tour to help students get scholarship money for university. Featured here, this is actually the California section. I, I do call this the California room. It's much more warmer. It's actually California and New York, but this is where his life transitions when he stops designing in New York City. He moves into California. He starts to design there. I guess he thought he would be able to make it 
even big again, and you know, everyone would be reinvigorated by him. But it didn't quite happen that way. So he actually ended up putting the fashion obscures in here. And again, the answer was that it was due to racism that he experienced. Here you get to see some of his garments for the cat Salem from Sabrina the Teenage Witch. You get to see that he made a garment for his really good friend, Thelma Houston. She's a Grammy Award winning singer. Her songs are super popular from the 70s. And this is her meeting the Pope. He also made bridal wear. And then this is Jay in California. Here, this is actually the house that Jay stayed with his friend Lester Wilson. When I went to California, Lloyd took me to the original places that they used to live. And he said, you want to take pictures? I was like, of course. We're historians. We're good. And then finally, this is Lloyd and Jay. This is when they met in 1985. Jay actually went to USC. He was coming out of the slump that he was in and started to pursue a degree so he could build a plus size brand. He wanted to make garments for women who were larger. He felt that they should get beautiful garments too. And then finally, this is the singer Ashanti made costume wear for her. She was in a television show called American Dreams. Um, and so, yeah, he produced a garment for her. He produced a lot of garments for many celebrities that were on that show. Um, it was, that show was like similar to American Bandstand, but they were trying to replay the past. This is his neighbor. He made a prom dress for her, fishtail prom dress. So he made the dress for her, but he didn't go in to see her off. I think it was, he would still make garments for private um, friends, clients, and his celebrities, but he was still going through the sadness. So what most people don't realize, unless they capture certain things like the date, 1974, this is New York City. Jay Jackson is producing garments his brand, a divisional collection, underneath Benson and Partners. But if you came out of that room, you would have saw that he was still in Paris, producing for other designers. So I find that G. Jackson is super multifaceted because he was able to produce for these collections which showed up in WWE, as well as producing in Paris, in tandem. One of the other things that I can say that many people ask, well, you know, oh, I'll be able to find him in WWD, and I tell them that you won't because WWD does not track G. Jackson in their metadata. I found that out when I was doing research for my master's thesis. So finally here, we have Pierre Cardin. This is actually a tech pack. It was much smaller and maybe about 10 inches. I took it and blew it up. In it, it says G. Jackson team that G. Jackson for Pierre Cardin. This is the American market. G. Jackson is now designing for the French Couturier before his American market. And here, this is Terry Cloth. So if you felt the actual tech pack, the Terry Cloth is still there. It feels exactly the same. And what you notice about these tear sheets, it doesn't say Jay Jackson's name, but one of the ways that he protected his legacy is by signing his signature. There and there. And so if he didn't do this, it would be lost forever. No one would know that these were his specific designs. So 1975, he was also a designer for Pierre Cardin.